Donald Trump has just won a sweeping victory in Iowa. So we're going to put America first. We're going to make America great again. Again, Iowa, we love you. In this, the opening contest of the U.S. election season, he has now taken the first step to winning the Republican Party's presidential nomination. How strong that team is, making his way into the building. But can Trump actually win the White House? Family members are already mapping out his second term. It is scorched earth when he's back in the White House, folks. While former Trump insiders are warning of impending catastrophe. My message would be, batten down the hatches. If he won the White House again, we're at risk of that powder keg being lit on fire. At the same time, President Joe Biden faces a mutiny in the Midwest. Sometimes you can't even put it into words how betrayed that we actually feel. We have what we have, in my opinion. Uh, no choices. I mean, two horrible choices. It all opens the door to a Trump return. No more Democrats! No more Democrats! Trump 24, baby. It's a wrap for y'all. Adding to the drama of this race, Donald Trump faces a legal hurricane. In the end, they will fail and we will win because we will never stop fighting to save the America we love. America's fate hangs in the balance. America will be in peril. You know, I think the militia movement will, will rise. In 10 months, he may be behind bars or president-elect and just possibly both. Now the question the world must ponder is, Trump, can he return? America is facing its most significant election since 1860. That fateful vote that brought Abraham Lincoln to power on the very eve of the Civil War. This year, Donald Trump enters the presidential race ahead in many of the polls, despite obstacles that would destroy any other candidate. Even more extraordinary, he is campaigning while challenging America's very democratic foundations, still insisting the last election was stolen. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election of 2020. Three years ago, I stood at this spot and heard his words echo across America. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. And I witnessed the consequences. Trump's political resilience his domination of the Republican Party, despite that insurrection, is perhaps the greatest riddle I have ever encountered. Even for America's seasoned political observers, this story is without precedent. You know, this situation is really unique. Most, most presidential candidates go away after being rejected by voters. Trump is a different case in this, in this instance. We've never had a former president who's been indicted and certainly never had one indicted for things he did as president. We are in completely uncharted territory. In theory, we could have a president serving from prison. No one has ever had the almost cult-like hold that Trump currently has on the Republican Party. The greatest enemy of the United States is the Democrat Party and those who support it. Trump Latino! In the suburbs of Miami, The Trump Circus has arrived. That all American blend of political theater and patriotic fervor. And at the heart of it is the great impresario. Please help me welcome everyone's favorite president, Donald J. Trump. The more his critics circle around him, the more defiant the show. His recent rallies have been dubbed the Retribution Tour. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. Featuring rhetoric that critics say draws on the very language of fascism. We will root out the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country. I am your retribution. I am your retribution.
But how on earth is such a campaign going to win over the centrist voters who will decide the election? To glimpse the strategy, to see if there is method in the madness, I am traveling 70 miles north from Miami to the center of the Make America Great movement, West Palm Beach, that ultra-wealthy city in the shadow of Trump's magnificent beach resort, Mar-a-Lago. In this unremarkable airport hotel, I have been invited to witness one of America's most unlikely political events. It is known as Walk Away, an attempt to persuade Democrats to walk away from their party and join the Trump train. And tonight, we're not going to be endorsing any candidates or right. anything. And if anyone does, they're going to be in trouble. Brandon Stracker is the face of the movement. I'm walking away. And I encourage all of you to do the same. A former actor turned pro-Trump social media influencer. He says minority voters in particular are craving for an alternative to a broken Democratic Party. We try to reach people and get them thinking for themselves and sort of you know, turn on a light bulb. My belief is that these communities are being used, they're being lied to, they're being manipulated, so I want to help get people thinking for themselves. But as speeches begin, it becomes clear this is, in fact, a room packed with Trump's ultra-loyalists. Big round of applause for everybody that put this together and for yourselves for coming out, for helping the walk-away movement keep moving. And on stage, it is not exactly outreach to moderates. You have decided to stand up and say to hell with the bullshit and get out here and stand strong because we are Americans and we have walked away from the garbage. Am I right or wrong? Even the Trump family is here, railing once more against the elite. It is scorched earth when he's back in the White House, folks. We, the people, run this country, not them. And Rudy Giuliani, the former New York mayor, is here waiting for showtime. How do I know when to stop? <laughs> Just keep going. He faces racketeering charges, to which he has pleaded not guilty. And last month, he declared bankruptcy after he was ordered to pay a stunning $148 million in damages for ruining the lives of two female election workers that he accused of fraud. On stage, he airs wild and unfounded opinions. You're living in something closer to a fascist state. Look at the difference in America when Donald Trump ran it. Look at all the people getting killed now with Biden running it. The strategy appears to be one of constant political provocation. This is outrage as an art form, with speakers relishing what they believe lies ahead in 2024. So here's another inconvenient truth. He's back. We're going to blow them out of the water. And this time, how sweet is it going to be when they say Donald Trump is president elect of the United States of America? When I meet Rudy Giuliani, he doesn't hold back on yet further unsubstantiated claims. What can the world expect of a Donald Trump second term? The world can expect salvation. Uh, we, we no longer have to stop this country from becoming a socialist, in large part, fascist country. Let me be clear, you're comparing uh, Joe Biden's America to Stalin's Russia. 100%. Uh, Joe Biden is, uh, without any doubt, working for China and Iran. He hasn't made one decision in the interest of the United States. But there is another element exciting the Trump troops, one that resonates far beyond this hall, Joe Biden's age. For Biden is 81 with a grueling presidential campaign ahead. And he could possibly face another four years in office. Many people responding to the polls say, yeah, Biden seems to be too old to be president. The, uh, the, the, uh... The Southern Hemisphere had access to change. The age question is not going to go away. He is the oldest president in U.S. history. We, it wasn't confrontational at all. 
Thank you, Cameron. Thank, thank you, everybody. This ends thanks. the count press thanks. conference. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. While Biden has made light of it and stated that with age comes more experience, it is a major concern for many voters, including Democrats. His frailty is being mocked and mimicked by Trump surrogates. It's nice to be here in Vietnam. But even if Republicans are giddy at Trump gaining ground in the polls, his path to the White House remains astonishingly complicated. And God bless you for walk away. Thank you. Because Donald Trump is not just running for president, but fighting to stay out of jail. He faces 91 charges in four separate trials. They can't beat us at the ballot box, so they try and beat us through the law. From racketeering and hoarding classified documents. This is a pure witch hunt for purposes of interfering with the elections of the United States of America. It's totally illegal. To perhaps most damningly, his attempt to overturn the 2020 election result. And I think that's an offense of such seriousness. It's an offense against all the American people. It's an offense against our system of government. It's a, an offense against our constitution. Once people digest that fact, it's gonna have a real impact on the way he's perceived. He denies all the charges brought against him but if he is convicted on any one of them, he could be imprisoned even before election day. It is absolutely insane that we might have a president who has been convicted of felonies and is potentially serving time in prison. Hey, you know the charge. What are they for? We love Trump. We love Trump. The legal minefield has divided and inflamed opinion across America. What Trump tried to do is suspend that constitution. Why did they beat Trump twice? Vote for Trump. You want a man to go to jail for being innocent. To some, it is a foundational principle that no one, not even Trump, is above the law. He is just somebody who's taken advantage of a, a group of people who are willing to follow him to their own demise. To others, Democrats have weaponized the justice system against their principal political opponent. The trial is bullshit because they're trying to go after him for no reason. And it just they just trying to start trouble. Some states, including Maine and Colorado, have ruled that Trump's name should not even appear on the ballot in his battle for the nomination, saying it is a breach of the Constitution because of his role in the attempted insurrection on January the 6th. But these legal skirmishes are certain to end up here, at the US Supreme Court, where conservative justices are in a decisive majority. They will be issuing a decision, I think, quite rapidly that will determine whether Donald Trump can be on those ballots or not. But remarkably, at the heart of the chaos, Donald Trump is seeing these legal troubles as actually part of his comeback narrative. He wants the trials televised. And that infamous police mugshot has become, in Trump world, a badge of honor. And that audacious strategy appears to be working. Some polls showing that he has established the edge over Biden in many of the key states. In battleground states, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Trump seems to have a lead in most, if not all of those states. And they likely will be the decisive states in 2024. The indictments have appeared to only boosted his popularity, at least among the Republican base. There seems to be a sense that he is being prosecuted for being a political candidate, that it is a witch hunt to use his language. But a lot of voters have also suggested that they are waiting to form an opinion to see what the outcomes of the cases are. There is one issue, one human drama, that Donald Trump believes he can leverage all the way to the White House. Our country is being invaded. This is an invasion. It is the widespread perception that President Biden's administration has lost all control of America's southern border. Astonishingly, almost three million migrants entered the US across this frontier with Mexico last year alone. And this constant, desperate flow allows Donald Trump to claim that America faces not just a crisis, but a national security threat. 
drugs, criminals, gang members and terrorists are pouring into our country. They're running wild in our Democrat-run cities. Republican states in the South are seeking to shift some of the burden to cities run by Democrats. So they are busing thousands north, bringing a border crisis into the Democratic Party's heartlands. In New York alone, an estimated 600 migrants every day are arriving in the city seeking shelter. Trump has seized on those fears of unsafe or illegal immigration, of unsavory characters coming across the border, and he's made that a central part of his campaign this year. And we will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. Biden's administration says, no, that's not true. It's the, the border is closed. Well, it, that seems to be gaslighting. What do we expect to do? Believe you or our own lying eyes. And that is another problem for, for Joe Biden and his reelection. In Chicago, over a thousand miles from that southern border, the politics of migration are turning many Biden loyalists into furious critics. No more Democrats! No more Democrats! We've been sold out by the Democrats! Chicago is a Democratic Party stronghold, and yet we find here a political mutiny is underway. We will remember you when it's time to vote. We won't forget. We say enough is enough. We're going red now, baby. We're going red. Trump 24, it's a wrap for y'all. Many residents here feel they are being betrayed by a president they voted for. Democrat-controlled Chicago declared itself a sanctuary city that would offer help to migrants. But residents were not prepared for this. We are sick and tired. Look what they're doing to us. Migrants need housing, schools, and health care. And locals insist they're in desperate need of those same resources. We were going to have a shelter at this particular location. <laughs> at neighborhood meetings. Trump, come in here. Clean this mess up. Anger towards city officials boils over. Stop depending on the politicians and stop voting for the same people getting the same results. Plans for this migrant camp have since been put on hold owing to community opposition. It seems that Biden's policies have succeeded only in creating division between many voters here and the new arrivals. Marsha Eaglin runs a charity that helps to support migrants in the city. She is torn on the issue, as she believes sanctuary is a fundamental American value. I bring stuff down in warm blankets and I drop it by places where I know people are um, living and they're cold. Okay. I'm gonna look. What is the number? It made me cry. It made me just want to just, just start hugging everybody and try and figure out how I could fit them in my house or something. Carmen Clay. I don't want to blast my state. I don't want to blast my city. I don't want to even blast my country. What I'm saying is what you're doing is not working. And I ask myself all the time, who in the heck are they talking to helping to make these decisions? But as a community leader here, Marsha hears all the time the frustrations of her fellow residents. For my city dollars that's being taken and, and, and funded to create this for them. What about us? Refund us some of our city tax dollars that we pay so that we can fix up our homes. It is abundantly clear that President Biden can no longer take the African-American vote for granted. While, yes, I'm a Democrat and I voted for Biden, just like so many people out here, they're wondering, is that the best thing? Do I trust either candidate? At this time, I don't. I'm going to be watching this carefully, and they will have to earn my vote. Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. do solemnly swear. In 2020, Biden won 92% of the black vote, 
Now some polls indicate that support has fallen sharply and up to a quarter of African-Americans in key states may vote for Donald Trump. A startling shift. It is significant that the black vote is fracturing in a way that we haven't seen in recent elections. And it is going to force candidates, especially Democratic candidates, to think about who they're speaking to, which votes they need to cultivate, and how they might need to shift their strategies. Many people, African Americans and others, do not like what they see. They don't see much in a way that has been beneficial to their to helping themselves. Plus, there's some indication, there's some indication that, that Trump's aggressive approach to issues tends to resonate with some blocks of voters. I am having a tour of Chicago with one such voter who is now a passionate advocate for Donald Trump. A lot of black people tend to just vote Democrat instead of looking at policies and that is what led to a lot of these gripes that they're having now. 24-year-old Zakia is a first-time voter here. She lives near to one of the many migrant camps that are spread out across the city. Trump would say this looks like a third world country. And honestly, I believe it does. Now a pro-Trump social media influencer, she is utterly disillusioned with President Biden. You feel like these scenes that we're witnessing here in Chicago, you know, would at least be addressed if Donald Trump was president? Absolutely, absolutely. Donald Trump said years ago that he was gonna build a wall around this country to secure the border, and that seems like thing that's being ignored by a lot of our politicians. He has the answers, and I'm sure people would be much happier um, at the city hall meetings if Trump was in office. I think this country is doomed. You're saying doomed? I think that we have a senile president who is a concern about the needs of the citizens and is doing everything he can to destroy the country, honestly. Zakia has given up not just on Biden, but on Chicago. Soon she is moving to Texas, a Republican state that she says aligns more closely with her very conservative worldview. You've had it with Democrats. Absolutely, yeah, I'm, I'm finished. Long. I just got of age to vote, honestly, within the last five years, and I've already realized that the way that this city is headed is not going to be beneficial for anybody. Chicago proudly calls itself a sanctuary city. But that goodwill has now reached breaking point here. And the political implications for the White House are immense. The city of Chicago agrees that the migrant crisis is putting severe pressure on limited resources. Officials pleading for further support from the White House. And Joe Biden also acknowledges the urgency of the situation and says he is determined to address the problem. But if some in the Democratic Party strongholds are turning to Trump, others, including some Republicans who know the former president best, are warning that a second Trump term would be fatal for the Republic. After serving in his first term, after witnessing the man up close in the Oval Office, on Air Force One, in the White House Situation Room, I can tell you if he wins the presidency again, it's the end of the American experiment. Miles Taylor was a senior official in the first Trump White House. Appalled by what he witnessed, he wrote an anonymous article in the New York Times, one that became famous as the political class tried to guess the author. Eventually, Taylor came out of the shadows and reveals to us the alarming steps that Trump sought to pursue while in the Oval Office. When I was in the administration, Donald Trump wanted to create his own mercenary force in the United States military. He saw what Vladimir Putin had with the Wagner Group in Russia, and he wanted to create his own version of this. This is a real story. Now, we ended up shutting down those conversations and saying, Mr. President, this is not a viable approach. Guess what I found out? Is that the year after I left the administration, that conversation cropped back up, and Donald Trump asked his National Security Council to look into this idea of creating a mercenary group responsible to the president only. That's what we're talking about here. And I don't think in a second term that those attempts will be thwarted. And Trump's plan for a second term is already being meticulously prepared. Behind the scenes, a sophisticated operation codenamed Project 25 is underway. An attempt to avoid the dysfunction of the first term and to concentrate power among true loyalists. 
There are huge stables of people ready to go into the federal government that have been vetted and demonstrated their loyalty to Trump and Trump alone. Former President Trump and his allies have also set aside a series of executive orders in which they plan to fire a lot of the civilians that are working in the federal government. It would be a shock and awe blitz. It'll mean in those first few days a slew of executive orders to remake the government, remake a government that's more pliable and put people in place who are willing to do what Donald Trump wants. His is a warning not just to America, but to allies around the world, including Britain. My message would be batten down the hatches because you will not be able to depend on the United States to be the central pillar of the Western world order. It's a very, very grave environment in the United States in terms of political violence and civil instability. And I think if you won the White House again, we're at risk of that powder keg being lit on fire. American elections are decided in the heartland, in Midwestern states like Michigan. Trump won here by a razor-thin margin in 2016, then Biden did the same in 2020. And with partisan voters already committed, much of this year's campaign will focus on undecided, centrist and independent voters. Ah, hi everybody. Very good. My, my favorite type of voters, not <laughs> independent, non-partisan. Everyone in this room voted for Joe Biden in 2020, but none are fixed in their allegiances. The importance of independent voters in the 2024 election is paramount because typically a candidate for president cannot win just based on the support of his party or her party. They need to get non-affiliated independent voters. And these voters tend to really be very important in, in suburban America. As in every house in this country, the question of Donald Trump's suitability for the White House drives the political conversation. He's an un imbalanced, unbalanced human being, and Lord knows what he might do. Uh, he's a narcissist, um, but there's still a large number of people who believe he's the gift to the world. So I don't know, I'm afraid. I'm in disbelief that he's even on the ballot. He should not be anywhere close to an election. But Joe Biden should draw no solace from that sentiment. He is also in deep trouble with independent voters. For while Biden receives some credit for avoiding a recession and for a growing US economy, for many, it is simply not enough. Even though inflation has come down, uh, people are being stung by the cost of literally everything when they go into the stores. And so as a consequence, you know, you know, as the old saying, it's the economy, stupid. We have homelessness growing in our society and the wealthiest nation in the world. It's a crisis what's happening in this country in terms of the gap between those who have affluence and those who don't. And that's the thing I'm most concerned about uh, on the Democratic side. Biden's approval ratings across America have never been lower. And if Trump wins the White House, it will be in part because of deep disillusionment with the alternative. We have what we have, in my opinion, and no choices. I mean, two horrible choices in my mind. And I'm still kind of hopeful that for some reason or another, I'm not wishing any harm to Joe Biden, but somebody else is able to take that position who is more in line with the values that I hold. The concern I have personally is if I do not vote for Joe Biden, what is that going to mean for America if Donald Trump gets back in? As far as Biden is concerned, I think he doesn't stand a chance in Michigan. And I, I base that mostly on the Arab American population, the vote, how they will be voting mm -hmm. in 2024. That Arab American vote is vitally important. Michigan is a swing state with a large Muslim population. In 2020, nearly 70% of Muslim Americans voted Democrat. In Detroit, attending a vigil for peace amid the Gaza war, I want to find out if Joe Biden can still count once more on these critical voters. 
My dear brothers and sisters, tonight we gather to mourn the loss. Instead, I discover something that should alarm and even shock Biden's campaign advisors. Sometimes you can't even put it into words how betrayed that we actually feel. If you feel anger, feel that anger. Many here feel profoundly let down by President Biden's support for Israeli military action and for his refusal to call for a ceasefire. In the crowd is Dr. Mohammed Alam, a vocal campaigner for Biden in 2020 within the Muslim community. And he now makes a stunning admission to me. I was the Muslim for Biden campaign chair and today I denounce Joe Biden. I will do everything, make sure he defeated in Michigan and he will defeat it in the U.S. presidential race. We Muslim community loved him. And today, what you're seeing, we are betrayal. So because of the betrayal, we are standing firm. I will vote for a Republican. It is all the more remarkable, given the alternative for these voters, is a man who also repeatedly stood shoulder to shoulder with Israel. You have been the greatest friend that Israel has ever had in the White House. And furthermore, Trump placed travel bans on many Muslim countries while in office and controversially moved America's embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. If Donald Trump is the, is the Republican candidate, would you vote for him over Joe Biden? If he will, I personally, I will. You would? Yes, I will. Wow. You would vote for Donald Trump over yes. Joe Biden? Yes, I would. Across this nation, the conflict in Gaza is further splintering communities that are already divided. For three months now, we have seen the rupture play out on American city streets and on college campuses. A young generation, those progressives forged in the heat of the Black Lives Matter protests, are turning on a democratic president. Back in Detroit, for the first time in my reporting from a liberal stronghold, Left-leaning voters are literally queuing up, asking to be interviewed so they can castigate Joe Biden. Can you imagine voting for Joe Biden in 2024? Never. 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 I, I don't understand what kind of human being he is. I don't. What's unfolding in front of us proves to us that we are dispensable to um, our politicians. And we're here to let them know that just as we have become dispensable to them, our vote for them has also become dispensable. If anything should frighten Biden, it is this. A young generation, impassioned and galvanized, viewing the Democratic Party with disdain. Independent voters, as well as progressives, as well as minorities, as well as young people, the glue in 2020 was Donald Trump for Joe Biden in his, in his election. The fear of Donald Trump, now given that the election is gonna be a referendum on Biden, it's hard to see that that glue can really be brought back into place and to, and to really hold that coalition together. Stunned by the anger for Biden in Detroit, I travel elsewhere in the Midwest to meet an old friend. When I first came to Youngstown in Ohio, in the months before the fateful 2016 election, it was here that for the first time, I truly realized that Trump's message was resonating deeply with working people. Gino De Fabio was my guide back then, the man I called the canary in the coal mine. He told me then against the conventional wisdom that Trump would win. I talked to a lot of people, union guys, people who would never ever say they would vote for a Republican, ever. And they're all in, and I, and I really believe it's going to be it's going to be it'll be earth shattering for some people, but I, I see it come. I see that coming now. Ah, uh, Gino, how are you? Hey, Robert. Every four years. Good to see you again, bud. Good to see you too. How's Youngstown? How's Ohio? We're still standing. Right. Today, Gino is once again clear that Donald Trump is heading for the White House. That the cost of living in Youngstown and across America will ensure a Biden defeat. So, Gina, you're, you kind of read the political weather here better than anybody I know. What's the feeling about Biden's America right now? We're not in a good place. We really are. We really are not in a good place as a country. For four years, we weren't ignored under, under President Trump. I mean, real wages went up. They did. 
jobs were coming back, factories were being built, interest rates were low, unemployment was low, everything was going well. It seems now that we, now that President Biden's been there a couple of years, I've struggled to go to the grocery store. I have a son, he's struggling to buy a house because of the interest rates. You can't ignore inflation. And I lay that all on the policies of this president. Although elements of the US economy have improved under Biden, many Americans say they do not feel it in their wallets. Unemployment rates have dropped below 4% in the United States. But, you know, a lot of people don't feel that they're really prospering in their, in their jobs. The court cases, uh, the 91 criminal charges, I mean, do you not find them kind of disturbing? Doesn't it give you second thoughts about Donald Trump? You know, I don't, I, I don't care. I don't care. I, I, I don't believe any of this is real, what they're doing to him. In my mind, it won't be a convicted felon or a convicted uh, ex-con being a president. It'll be somebody they try to persecute, and he'll be a hero of the people again. Gino's parting words echo the past. I think President Trump's going to win the election. I really do. Because he really was the only one looking out for us. And I heard his message, and I believed him. He said it in a way that I believed him. And I believed him in 2016, and I believed him in 2020. And I still believe him today, seeing what the other side offers. The momentum he's gaining across the country, I think President Trump's going to win again. The polls in recent months have told us that things are looking pretty grim for Joe Biden's re-election, as things stand now. But polls have a way of being uh, subject to change, and we've seen this happen in presidential elections in the past. So although they look grim now, they are not necessarily predictive of what's going to happen in November 2024. Central to Donald Trump's election strategy is a narrative that portrays the government not as an ally, but as a menace and a threat. For years, he has promoted the idea of a deep state, the belief that a cabal of liberal forces in Washington is seeking ever more power at the expense of freedoms cherished by ordinary Americans. We will demolish the deep state. We've never seen a presidential candidate embrace conspiracies and conspiratorial thinking in the same way that President Trump has done. He has made a central part of his agenda, the concept of a deep state, the fact that people are out to get him, that there is a witch hunt. After the 2020 presidential vote, that concept of a deep state fueled the unfounded claims of a stolen election. Either the deep state destroys America, or we destroy the deep state. Now for this election, there is an even more provocative narrative being pushed by those in Trump's orbit, one they hope can carry them to victory. It paints America as a police state, which has the benefit of allowing Trump to project himself not as a criminal defendant, but as a victim. So without further ado, enjoy police state. This film being screened at the right-wing think tank, the Heritage Foundation in Washington, is packaging that wild theory, popularizing the notion that Biden's administration has weaponized the FBI and law enforcement. Dinesh D'Souza is the movie director and Trump ally driving this controversial narrative. Who is Dinesh D'Souza? Are you a provocateur, are you a polemicist, a movie maker, a podcast, a, a Trump acolyte? Who are you? You know, it's a little bit hard to say. I'm an immigrant who is who believes in the idea of American exceptionalism. I'm merely trying to communicate complex ideas to people who are not normally habituated to hearing about politics. In his film, there are scenes portraying God-fearing, patriotic Americans being arrested at church and at home. In the world of Dinesh D'Souza, America is staring into the abyss. So this idea of waking up America, you are the kind of, you know, the fire alarm for America in your view. I don't know a time other than the Civil War when basic American liberties were so threatened. So, one of the characteristics of a police state, mass surveillance, we have that. Widespread censorship, we have that. 
ideological indoctrination in schools and the media, we have that. Criminalization of political differences, we have that. Political yeah, prisoners, you know, we have that. Dinesh, we have independent courts and a free media. You, you seem to be just brushing over that. No, I think that they are free and independent and ideologically aligned on one side. These unsubstantiated narratives have also reached deep within the Republican Party, including with Trump supporting lawmakers. Critics will say yep. this movie and your views fuel conspiracy theories. Don't go ahead and say whatever you want. The biggest threat to America and the American people are the dishonest media. What I do know is that these federal agencies have been turned on the very people they're supposed to serve, the American citizen. Joe Biden has weaponized those agencies to go after the American people. These accusations by D'Souza and Trump are coursing into the mainstream of American politics. But academics and independent observers say such claims are extreme and without substantial merit. President Trump has demonstrated a real disregard for the truth and for facts and continues to put forth every conspiracy that is useful to him. All of this has allowed Trump to try and discredit the numerous legal cases against him. And it's, and it's no, no coincidence, coincidence that the deep state, state is coming, coming after me even harder. I have seen for myself what happens when wild narratives gain traction. Stop the steal! Stop the steal! Stop the steal! Stop the steal! The attempted insurrection three years ago was propelled by unfounded stolen election claims. And I've witnessed how conspiracies have prompted militia groups to march down American streets. You're heavily armed and on the streets of an American city. I wondered who you are. Not giving it out. Which militia? Not giving it out. Fearing a repeat of January the 6th, I have come to see how some Trump supporters, those heavily armed and with strong faith, are preparing not to initiate violence, but to be ready for societal breakdown if Joe Biden wins in November. Greg, can I ask you to pray? Sure. Father, we're so grateful that we could spend some time training. Father, to protect others. To protect our nation. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Rod of Iron Church is a Christian evangelical group where guns and God are weaved into a fiercely pro-Trump and anti-government view of the world. Hey, Pastor Sean, how are you? Hey, Robert. Good nice to see you. Thank you for letting me into your compound. Pastor Sean is the leader of this congregation, where the AR-15 assault rifle is seen as a divine instrument for defending God-given freedoms. What does Rod of Iron mean? It means the modern-day sword or the modern-day musket. It's more important for the citizens to have these weapons yes. than the government. 100%. That authority comes from God, and that ability to defend yourself, family, and your country from tyrants, including a runaway government that has become tyrannical, uh, that is the, God's greatest gift to humanity to preserve freedom and liberty for all. It is immediately clear where political loyalties lie. I need one more indictment to ensure my election. <laughs> one more indictment to ensure my election? <laughs> I'll be a couple more, but the more they indict him, I think the more popular he's going to become. He's going to become more legendary. I mean, that's he's going a, to become more. I can't compute that. You're saying the, he's the more he's charged. More a star. Yeah, more of a star because he's being charged unjustly. I think it's, it's galvanized everybody. And uh, a lot of folks from different communities now are moving towards Trump. And the support, support has become greater because of the kind of draconian tactics that the left has done under Biden. Look at what they're doing. Look at how hard they're coming after. Four different indictments. RICO charges. In weekly sermons that air on the church's conservative social media channels. When you ask them now the polls, does the country feel galvanized, divided? Yes. Everybody says, yeah, I feel, it feels divided. Pastor Sean talks of Trump's alleged persecution. They were trying to take him off the ballots, saying he's an insurrectionist. Like many fringe groups in America, members here are preparing for worst case scenarios. A recent poll found that 85% of Americans are worried about escalating political violence. If Joe Biden is re-elected, what does that mean for America? I think it means that, you know, America will be in peril. 
that will be a tragic uh, beginning of a sharp, quick decline of the world falling into tyranny. If Trump loses in November and there is a narrative on the right that the election has been stolen, what happens then, uh, Pastor Sean? I, I think the militia movement will, will rise. Counties will build official militias. Every year, this church holds festivals celebrating their right to bear arms. Rod of Iron followers display their loyalty to the one man who they believe stands between them and chaos. He's getting persecuted for standing up for the people and not the establishment. And so that's why I think people resonate with him. If he loses, people are going to be praying a lot. In this dramatic election year, Americans are bracing for a bitter political fight in which the Republic itself may be at stake. It is clear to me that the progressive coalition that elected Biden in 2020 is in danger of collapse. Trump is seeing his criminal trials as a political gift, believing it underpins his image as a rebel and a martyr. Much remains unclear. How will Americans react to a presidential candidate on trial, perhaps convicted and jailed? Does that turn opinion against him or further his argument? It leaves Donald Trump at the center of the American storm, a savior to some, an existential danger to others. This country now faces a profound reckoning. <laughs>